A few weeks ago, I did an episode on what I thought was earth-shattering information from Elon Musk and Tesla. Interestingly enough, not very many people picked it up, but last night Elon Musk upped the ante and even said that he's looking at removing radar entirely. Let's take a look at this. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So lately I've been trying not to release any weekend videos because I've been trying to set aside a little bit of time and not get so crazy, but Elon has a way of messing with my plans. <laughs> Just kidding, man. Heart Elon Musk. Even though I know that he'll never reply to me, I've actually done a video on that. But anyway, love you, man. It's okay, you can mess with my plans all weekend, all you want. So what am I talking about? Well, back in March, Elon Musk released a tweet about not having to use radar at all and going with a pure vision solution to full self-driving in the next release, which is version 9.0 of their software. So I thought this was earth shattering news. I did an episode on that and actually Clean Technica picked it up last night and went with it. So first of all, thank you so much. I always appreciate when somebody notices. I will put the link to the video and to the Clean Technica article in the description in case anybody can't like hit the cards and stuff. I know sometimes if you watch on TV or whatever, you can't get that. But anyway, I'll put the links in the description so you can go back and you can watch the original video and then watch this one as a follow-up because I explained some of the things better in the original video than I will have time to do here. Anyway, this is just a real quick follow-up, but what is the big news? Well, let's take a look at a couple of tweets that Elon Musk posted overnight last night. The first tweet came about in response to a post by Whole Mars Catalog. Whole Mars Catalog said, turned on FSD in a parking lot and it went all the way to the destination without having to touch a thing. No speed adjustments, no hitting the accelerator, nothing. The craziest part, it was completely normal. You're going to love trying it in your own car at Elon Musk. So that is pretty incredible stuff. Of course, Holmar's catalog has access to the full self-driving beta, which I believe is at either 8.2 or 8.3 right now. I'm not sure which one is the latest version. But anyway, the major step change that is happening is version nine, and Elon Musk has talked about releasing that to a very wide public and having the button where everyone who wants it will be able to go through a process of, I'm sure, you know, selling their soul to Tesla in, in exchange for getting this button to drive the beta along with everyone else. As I noted in the last video, there have been no accidents with full self-driving beta at this point, which is pretty incredible. It's also probably uh, something to say about how good the drivers are themselves, but also that means that the full self-driving beta is doing very, very well. Anyway, I've gone on record and I will say it again here. I believe the timing of the button is going to be 420. That is uh, 10 days from when I'm recording this. It sounds like just about the right timing. And I just think I'm not one who partakes of that sort of lifestyle, but I know that Elon Musk is. So I just have this feeling that he's going to find it very humorous to release the full self-driving beta on 420. So we'll see how I do, but I've been saying that for months and I think that's when it's coming out. So anyway, let's get to the response here. In responding to Holmar's catalog, Elon Musk said, quote, almost ready with FSD beta version 9.0, step change improvement is massive, especially for weird corner cases and bad weather, pure vision, no radar. So that was what set off the storm because people said, okay, so again, he's saying that there's no radar involved. So some questions followed up, including one from Owen Sparks that said, does this mean you can remove the radar from production or will it still be included as a backup? To which Elon Musk responded, remove. So let's talk about that for just a second. That means that Elon Musk, Andre Carpathy and company believe so strongly in the ability of the vision system and how well it's working that they don't even believe that they need the radar system as a backup to what they've got in the vision system. And that is pretty mind blowing. Number one, what does this mean in terms of them versus companies like Waymo, et cetera? Well, Waymo has really touted how far ahead they are. They've got, what the last I saw, I think their cars are about $250,000 each, right? So, okay, so let's take a Tesla, which starts at about 37,000 ish and they're going to be reducing that price over time to a Waymo, which is about $250,000. So you've got a car that is not, is not a consumer car in the Waymo, and you've got a very much consumer car in the Tesla. Teslas also have... I think a factor of about a thousand, I think 30 million to 30 billion miles is the is the comparison between Waymo's miles and Tesla's miles. And so you've got this huge data lead that Tesla has because they have such a large fleet that is driving so much, right? I've contributed about 5,500 miles since I've gotten the car myself. So, you know, all of that data goes to the mothership and they look at it and they they pull out edge cases. They can find all sorts of weird things, you know, 
cows and deers and things walk, walking across the road, all sorts of bizarre stuff that you're just not going to see under normal taxi driving circumstances when you only have a certain number of miles driven on something. So anyway, they've got this huge data lead and they have been pushing more and more for vision. So the opposite, of course, is you've got Waymo, which is completely decked out in sensors. It's got LiDAR on top. It's got the cameras. It's got the ultrasonics. It's got the radar. It's got everything. And what Tesla is saying here is that not only don't they need the, radar, the LiDAR, which they've been saying for a while, but they don't need radar either. And that is huge because radar is, a, a, you know, it's fog penetrating. It's long distance. It's not very high resolution, but it's actually really good at bouncing off of things to determine what's ahead of you, et cetera. So to be confident enough to say that they don't need the radar system is pretty amazing. And then for Elon Musk to double down on that, I mean, this really ups the stakes here by saying they're essentially going to remove radar at some point in the future makes this, this even more incredible. Again, as a follow-up to this conversation at 4.16 a.m. this morning, my time at least, <laughs> Elon Musk re replied to Holmar's blog again and said, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? Vision has much more precision, so better to double down on vision than do sensor fusion. So again, I had a couple of people ask me on Twitter already this morning, what does this stuff all mean? Well, basically the, the way that most full self-driving works is to fuse all of the different sensors together. So again, it, for a Waymo case or something, you've got LiDAR, which provides a high resolution map and a constant scanning of the situation in uh, projected, so it actually projects out laser beams and bounces those back and figures out where it is in space. Then you've got radar, and the radar is bouncing off of things, mostly in front. Some companies have them in the back too, but mostly it's in front to make sure that nothing is coming up that the vision system is not seeing, right? So it's, um, if you've got, a, I don't know, we've got a Mazda CX-5 that has uh, the, the, the traffic aware cruise control or TACC. And what that does is it bounces radar off the cars in front of it and it determines how fast they're going and it adjusts its speed with that. So that's a, a good use for radar, etc. Then you've got vision, which of course is the cameras on the system, which work like your eyes. So people are pretty familiar with that idea. And then on top of that, you've got ultrasonic sensors around the, around the car itself. So I, of course, have asked Elon Musk about what he's going planning on doing with the ultrasonic sensors, because I'm wondering if they might eventually remove those as well, too. But, you know, <laughs> the odds that I'll actually get an answer are very, very low. So maybe if somebody who's got Elon's ear wants to, like, retweet that, that uh, thing that I posted or just post it yourself and ask about ultrasonic sensors, that would be really interesting to find out. And if I find out in the meantime, I'll, you know, put underneath all of this or I'll overlay this with some sort of response from Elon Musk. So one thing I definitely know about this is I know how much Elon Musk and I assume a lot of other people, probably Franz at Tesla, hate the little pucks that they have to carve out. There's a really big puck on the front of the Model Y, which is where the radar goes, and then there's little pucks all around, which is where the ultrasonic sensors are. I know they hate this because they spent a great deal of time and effort with the Model X in particular getting rid of those things. It was very expensive to do it, but they thought aesthetically it was so pleasing not to have those little pucks carved out of the car that they went to a huge amount of trouble to do it. Notice they didn't do that for the Model 3 or the Model Y because it was very, very expensive. But anyway, so I would imagine that them getting rid of the radar and removing that puck, and then if they could get rid of the ultrasonic sensors as well and getting rid of those little pucks all around the car, that would make them very happy. And again, fewer parts, even though radar is not that much, I think it's still on the order of four or $500 to order one of those radar units. So, so that's, you know, that's four or 500 bucks they save. Uh, all the electronics, all of that other stuff, and then all of the back-end processing that has to fuse that with vision, and it has to make a decision. Like Elon Musk says, which one do you use when there's a disagreement between the two? So it's better to just have one system that works consistently and without surprises than it is to have multiple systems and to have to have some sort of democratic voting system going on inside the car. That can lead to really weird stuff. I know for a fact that the current version of full self-driving that I have that's not the beta, it is, <laughs> I always, I can call it now, if a car pulls out because it's Georgia and people just pull out in front of you, they don't care. But if it pulls out and it makes a turn around you, you know as a human being that you're not going to have to stop for that car. But I think what happens is that it bounces radar off of that. The radar says, oh my gosh, there's an object up ahead. It's not smart enough to go like, oh, that object is moving sideways. It's going to be out of the way by the time I get there. And so you get this braking thing that happens. So it's very annoying and you're like, Ah, oh, geez, you know, <laughs> you look like a fool on the road because the car starts to break when it's like past the time that it would make sense for it to break. Anyway, so that kind of stuff can be gotten rid of if you don't have this sensor confusion situation. Plus, there's an aesthetic 
advantage to the car and not having those pucks carved out. But, you know, if we can get rid of radar and the ultrasonic sensors, there's a lot of those things around the car. I think maybe 12. There's a lot. I'm, <laughs> I'll have to pull up the number exactly and just overlay it with this. But anyway, if you can get rid of all of those things, you've saved hundreds of dollars to possibly a thousand dollars in the car. You've saved a lot of wiring and complexity in terms of that. So again, you know, that's just cost savings, which can either be passed on to the consumer or Tesla can have higher margins on their vehicles and maybe they can do a little bit of both, right? So maybe it saves $1,000 or maybe it saves $2,000 with all the electronics. And so they take $1,000 and then they give the consumer $1,000. So the car becomes $1,000 cheaper and Tesla makes $1,000 more money because they don't have parts. And the best parts, as we all know, are no parts. So finally, let's follow up with a few other tweets that took place a little bit after this or during this conversation. Number one, Owen Sparks asked, does the Boring Company use autopilot in the Vegas Loop Tunnels, which are the underground tunnels that the Boring Company is creating or has created, I think it's pretty much done, under Las Vegas, and they're going to have tracks where uh, their cars are going to be able to drive. Electric cars will obviously be preferred because in tunnels you really don't want you know, gas fumes coming out and so forth. But anyway, so Elon Musk responded to that by saying it will. So that means that they will have the cars. I believe what the idea is that everyone is going to be a uh, pedestrian commuter. So we're not going to be talking about driving your car down there, your personal one. But let's say you're at the north end of the strip or something, or gosh, is it north, south, or east, west? I can't remember. But like you're at Circus Circus, which is at one end of the strip or something. And you go down and you, you then get into an electric vehicle, which is autopiloted. And then that takes you to like Caesar's Palace or something in the middle of the strip. So it will drive you there and then you get off and you come up. So just like a subway system, except it will be using personal automobiles that are driving on their own automatically as opposed to using big subway train cars that are driven by human beings. So it's just basically a personalized subway system. But he is saying that they will be using automated, full self-driving autopilot in these cars under the ground, which is super, super cool. And finally, a tweet from Tesla owners of Austin responding to the removing the radar. Better vehicle with less parts. Will there come a day when we do not need manual seat adjustment buttons? Elon responds to that by saying, good point. Next major software revision will do much better with automating wipers, seat heating, and defrost. Probable seat settings just based on occupant mass distribution should be possible. So this actually harkens back to a video where I talked about Elon Musk and Joe Rogan having a discussion and Elon dropping a bombshell that the airbags in Teslas are automatically adjusting themselves all the time based on the occupant's weight, based on their position, based on their driving position and speed, etc., etc. So basically the airbags are adjusting themselves based on the human being's mass position, etc., etc., to be the most effective as possible. So the next step, of course, is why not just have the seats themselves adjust to the most comfortable position? So as opposed to, you know, having to like set this thing and manually adjust any changes you want to do, the car itself would automatically adjust the seat to the most comfortable position for driving. And of course, eventually most comfortable position for being a passenger. And maybe it would be smart enough to know, of course, like I weigh a different amount than my wife does and weigh a different amount than my son and my mass distribution is different. So all of those things, it would be able to say like, aha, John is in the passenger seat right now and it would know that I have a preference maybe to have my seat lean back further and the seat up further and the lumbar support on and it would be able to do all of that via AI control it would just know how to do that so again I you know eventually I could see a touch screen interface to adjust the car the, the seat when you absolutely needed to so it's sort of like the stalks in the model s right you're getting rid of the gear shifting stock it's still there on the touch screen you can swipe up or down if you want to go in in reverse or drive or neutral or whatever but it would get rid of the actual physical buttons. So again, fewer parts, the seat becomes, you don't have to have all the buttons on the side, you don't have to have the electronics and you don't have to have all of that stuff wired in. So it all just becomes a touchscreen interface, but for the most part, once it kind of identifies who you are and how you like to sit, it'll just adjust it for you and you'll never have to think about it. So that is all amazing stuff. So what we have here is we have this incredible vision from Tesla, from Elon Musk and everybody to get rid of as much stuff as possible. The most important part of that is getting rid of radar and potentially ultrasonic sensors. 
to make the car depend completely on a vision system, just like us human beings do, right? We do have ears as well, and I feel like I've, I've, <laughs> I've put in a request that they actually deal with audio as well, because I do believe that audio helps out with low speed situations where you can hear things sometimes that you can't see. But anyway, regardless of that, human beings only have our eyes and our ears and our accelerometers, and that's what Tesla more or less is going for. They're not gonna have all of these extra things like LiDAR and radar and potentially ultrasonic sensors and so forth. So that vision of reducing, 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 but having to have such elegant and beautifully trained and data-driven models that these cars can perform just so immaculately without needing all of this other backup stuff. Uh, Elon Musk has always called LiDAR a crutch. It's like something that makes it look like you're doing better than you are, but it's actually a sign that you're doing worse. And here we can see that radar is kind of the same thing too. Again, it's sort of a crutch. Why not use vision, right? If you can create this false LiDAR map in real time of where you are, you don't need radar anymore. And that, my friends, is worth doing a weekend episode on. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and informative. I'm telling you, man, I'm still trying to process this. It's early morning on a Saturday and I'm like, man, how is this stuff all gonna work out and how cool is it all gonna be? Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please do like it so other people can find it and subscribe for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are so wonderful. Thank you all so, so much for your support. And speaking of support, I do wanna say that I did an interview yesterday with the folks who designed the Cyberlander for Cybertruck. It's definitely worth a watch. These guys are amazing and they're inspired by Tesla to create amazing stuff. So again, I think it's worth a peek at that video as well to see how Tesla is inspiring other companies to remove parts, to make things better, to make them simpler and more elegant. And definitely check out our merch store. You can look at the link in the description and you can see we have a Don't Mess With Tesla t-shirt, all input is error, et cetera, et cetera. A bunch of stuff and you help support the channel. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link helps out the channel. Thanks so much. And as always, please feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.